up the last couple of years, hasn't it? It's about the same to me. Yeah. It seems like there's more people here the last time we came through. Well, maybe the cold's keeping them inside. Oh, get inside in about a half minute myself. If this snow will hang off, we can get that grand before noon. Stick of this fat whiskey. Hey, that sounds good. Right Thank you. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. Don't run off of that. Ah. Tell you, the older a man gets, the colder the winters become. <laughs> have you noticed that? <laughs> no, I can't say I have. You know the Sam Masters mine? Yeah, the yellow girl. Yeah. How's the road up that way? Well, it's been snowing on and off, but as long as it don't blow and drift shut, it'll be passable. I'll tell you, one more of those drinks and some more of this hot stove, and I ain't gonna leave here. <laughs> well, we better be on our way, Hoss. Uh, may I ask uh, what your business with Sam Masters might be? Well, it's a personal matter. I have a reason for asking that question. Well, see, you tell me a reason, and I just might give you an answer. It's a personal matter. How much do we owe you? Oh, no. The, I never charge strangers for the first drink. Well, thank you, Frank. Yeah. Thank you much. like that bartender and cure like that guy at the stove. Yeah. See what your foolish delays have cost me, Tyler? I'm sorry, Colonel. Yes. Now the forces against us have doubled. Doubled at the very least.
the best snowpack in years, Paul. Yeah. Should be great for the spring grasses, yeah? Yeah. Because Mr. Tyler insisted on wasting so much time, we we'll have to move with some haste. Now, Colonel Hudson, I Two more men have gone up to the mine. Who they are, what their purpose is, I don't know. I do know they look very capable. How many men does that make all together now? Depending on how many miners are still there, between six and a dozen, as nearly as I can determine. Stiff odds. You weren't hired to count, Sawyer. You were hired to fight as I tell you to fight. Did I say I wouldn't? No, you did not. I don't need that, Sergeant. It's getting cold in here, Colonel. Now, I don't want anyone killed if we can help it, understand? All I want is to take Thomas Andrews prisoner. He calls himself main... Sam Masters now. My main concern is that we don't add to crimes already committed. I don't see how we're going to get Andrews out of there without killing him. We'll force him to give himself up. Or the others to surrender him. Yeah, but Uncle Jim, if there... There's six or a dozen of them, and only four of us, if I were through Mr. Tyler, I don't see how we're going to do it. It's not how many you are in guerrilla fighting, Teddy. It's how many the enemy thinks you are. Saddle up. <laughs> Get these on up to the corral. Now, you're going to stay till tomorrow, that's sure. Well, we were hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Run into much snow. Just enough to make the trip enjoyable. It's sort of quiet around here, Sam. Is your bunkhouse empty? I've shut down the mine horse. It's just my daughter and I. We're all that's left. Well, I'll look at the horses. Here, I'll, I'll take care of them, Paul. You go in here. All right. I'll see you all in there in a minute. to see you. And you're as lovely as ever. The image of her mother. You men, always flattering. They've been waiting the noon meal, hoping you'd get here. Hungry? Oh, starved. Or would you rather look at the mine first? Well, knowing my son, horse, I think we'd better eat first. <laughs> if you men will sit down for a few minutes, I'll dish up the food. All right. Would you, uh... You'd like something to thaw the frost. Well, I think that would be just right to warm the insides. <laughs> Still a lot of A and R in the yellow girl. Yeah, I think so. Well, shall we uh, go in? Oh, I didn't expect 
your bags for Sue. <laughs> Ellen, uh, put the pot on. I think these gentlemen would like a cup of tea. Anything you say. Does horse like something a little stronger? Yeah, don't mind if I do, Sam. Thank you. It's right over there on the sideboard. Sam, I sure hate to see you sit out. Still a lot of money to be made in that mine. You're going to stand by your agreement to buy it back. Oh, of course I will, of course I will. Just kidding. I think it's more valuable to you now than when I sold it to you. You told me when I bought the mine from you that you'd take it back. Now, and Sam, Sam, look, I, I brought the money with me. I got the cash. If you want to go through with the deal, that's fine. I want to go through with it. Here, let me help you, Ellen. I can manage, thanks. Well, and uh, I've sold the mine, Ellen. We're going to San Francisco. Glad for you. Now, you want to go, don't you? I want to settle down. I want to stay in one place. But it doesn't matter what I think or want. That's, uh... Been rough on her traveling the way we have. Really haven't settled down for long since I picked her up at her grandmother's after the war. Yeah, lived there all during the war. Nice home. Sheltered. I don't know. Uh, I guess uh, I'm just not cut out to be a miner. Well, some people aren't. Been restless ever since the war, you know, footloose. Tried my hand at several things, uh, successful at most, but after a year or so, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, sure. I guess I do, Savage. You're the wandering kind. I guess you just got to keep moving. Why don't you tell them why you're the wandering kind? Uh, Ellen, please. Tell them why we're moving, Father, and tell me. I won't hush. I've explained the best I can. I haven't believed you, Father. I'd like to know the truth. Why did you change your name? Why have you been running and running and running? Please, Ellen, not in front of company. You promised me when we came here that we could stay here, that I could have a home and friends... And now we're running again, and I want to know why. Hey, Paul, the horses.
You must be getting tired. You know what's happened, don't you? What? The prisoner's in here. to lead you to Andrews and you were to let me go. Wasn't that the agreement? It was. Well, from here on, it's up to you. I don't see any reason I should risk my neck now. I don't know Andrews is in that house. I haven't seen him. I only have your word for it. He's there. Calling himself Sam Masters. Well, I'll know soon enough. Meanwhile, you'll stay here until I am sure. And for another reason. I think Andrews has the right to confront the man who betrayed him. The colonel said nobody gets out of there. So stay alert. Why do you think you're down there, Sergeant? The way I know it for sure. It'll be half a dozen. All right. What's it all about? What can I tell you? They ran off with our horses. Thieves? Oh, Sam, stop it. Those men out there. They're the reason that you're willing to sell a paying mine. The reason you changed your name. The reason you've been running. Isn't that right? Ben. Hello, the house! Behind the rock, see him? Yeah, I see him. Hudson. Who's Hudson? Colonel Hudson. Who's he want? He wants to kill me. Again. Yes. Yeah. My name is James Hudson. Ben Cartwright. The man in that house that calls himself Sam Masters. I want him. Why? His real name is Thomas Andrews. He commanded a Confederate prisoner of war camp 
and was directly responsible for the deaths of many Union soldiers, in particular, ten of my men. I'm going to take him as a prisoner back to the site of that camp. He'll be tried there and punished there. And whose authority? An authority vested in me by my dead comrades. No, not enough. Now don't worry. He'll be tried by the proper authorities. He wasn't forgotten by the Union forces after the war. He's just a loose end that hasn't been picked up. It's all cut and dried, isn't it? For you, not for me. There are two sides to every argument. And I'll have to hear Master's side before I can make up my mind. All right. But don't take too long. I'm prepared to break in. Try it. There'll be dead men in the snow. I might have known it would finally be Hudson who'd come after me. He's not a man to forget. Well, I've known you a pretty long time. I just can't believe you're guilty of the crimes he described. I'm guilty, Ben. Now, Hudson says that there were an awful lot of people who died in that camp needlessly. Well, I just can't believe you capable of allowing a single person to die without at least trying to help them. I tried. There were 500 men behind that fence. 500 to provide for. Couldn't you do that? No. No, you, you couldn't just let them go. I could only keep them there with rifles. I couldn't give them enough food, water, medicine. But there must have been some food. Some. Not enough. Takes a powerful lot of food to feed 500 men. I'm not trying to deny my guilt. I was given the task of providing for those men. Well, the way I see it, you've been running because you failed. Isn't that it? I just wanted to find some place where nobody knew me, knew what I'd done. No matter where I settled, it wouldn't be long before somebody recognized me, point me out, whisper, that's Thomas Andrews. The man at Camp Stanley where all those men died. Paul, come here, take a look. If I can catch that horse, I can get out of here and get help. We can't stand him off long. Yeah, these little dangerous horses. Too dangerous. Poor animal, the best. You're going to have to catch him and bridle him and saddle him. The other two are only against you. Paul, the way I see it, we ain't got no choice. I'll make it. Don't worry about me.
mistakes. Dang fool. Don't put this to him. Hey, Jim. I mean, Colonel, the, the big one just came out of the house. He got a bridle on a horse. He just rode off. Stop it. seen or heard a thing. Well, that's good. I... I hope your son is all right. Thank you, I hope so, too. Mr. Cartwright. What, Ellen? Is my father really guilty? He was ordered to command that camp. Could he have turned the men loose once he saw that he couldn't take care of them? No. No, then, uh, then he would have been disobeying orders. And he could have been shot for that. But why? If he did it to save their lives... Because then the men would have gone back into the lines, killing Confederate soldiers. Yes, I suppose they would have. It's awfully difficult to... to know how to... look at a man. I, and here's a man who's put in charge of a prison camp. He's responsible for everybody inside it. You've got to take care of them. They die. There's nothing you can do about it. On the other hand, can you fault a man for obeying orders? I wish I knew what to think. So I. Uh... Warm enough, Colonel. Maybe I should. Maybe I should warm that blanket, boy. Confound it, Sergeant. Will you quit your fussing? I could make the fire bigger. The fire is big enough. Is he hurt? No, sir. He fell off his horse when I shot. I got the drop on him, tied him up. It's been a long walk up that hill. Move over to the fire. Warm yourself. For a man that goes around shooting at folks, he's got a mighty kind heart. I have no wish to harm you. All I want is Thomas Andrews. You ain't gonna get him. <laughs>
Stay on the alert, do you hear? Keep your eyes open and your ears open. There's no telling what they're liable to do next. Maybe I could sneak down there, peek in some windows or something, see how many there are in there. You stay here. If you're sneaking around, you get yourself killed. Shots. We'll see what happens. Right. And no killing. Something fierce. I can't even move. Well, maybe that's just as well. We we'll take care of a prisoner. I don't think he'll move, but if he tries to get away, you just call out. determined to take you back. How many of them are there? Well, he says a lot, but I think he's lying. They don't know how many we are. That's what he came down here to find out. That's why they're holding off. What are we going to do? I don't know. 
you have any ideas? I got there in time to see one of them help Teddy into the house. Was he hurt? Some, not real bad. I gave orders to stay away from that house. I know that. Did you try to help him? Well, you said no killing. Nothing I could do. Now you've got one less man. They've got three miners, masters, Cartwright. You're outnumbered. You'd best give this whole thing up. You might ought to listen to what he says. Seems to me like it makes a lot of sense. I don't believe in those three miners. Well, there's only one way you can find out. Go in there and try to get him. What I'm trying to say is, I don't see why you'd want to get mixed up in a thing like this. It's the Colonel. He's my uncle. He's kin. But his old grudges aren't your grudges. Why'd you want to go gallivanting after him? I didn't go gallivanting. I went soldiering. Soldiering? I saw a lot of men go soldiering. Where'd the world be if there weren't soldiers? Well, they'd probably be a lot better off. You're the limit. I got an older sister just like you. She doesn't understand nothing either. You know, it takes a lot of hatred to bear a grudge like you do, Colonel. If you'd spent a year behind a fence watching your men die, you'd bear a grudge too. There was war on. You keep forgetting that. There are rules by which civilized men fight wars. Rules to die by. What difference if a man dies from hunger or a bullet is dead both ways? The first principle of warfare is to kill the enemy, isn't it? I spoke of civilized men, Tyler. You don't qualify. Colonel, you're still a prisoner. You're imprisoned by a fence of hatred as much as you were ever imprisoned by a fence of wire. But this time, there's a difference. Here, I'm on the outside. He's on the inside. And tomorrow morning, that fence comes down. I have to tear it down with my bare hands. be shot or be killed. And there's Ellen. Yes, there is Ellen. What about her? I don't want harm to come to her. You don't want harm to come to her. But you're quite willing to go out and give yourself up so that she has no father. It doesn't make any sense. Got me guessing. Guessing? Yeah. Well, I 
Watson is absolutely certain that you're guilty. I mean, I just want to put a stop to the fighting. Do you want the fighting to go on? No. No, I don't. But there's a whole lot of difference between not fighting and total surrender. There's a middle ground somewhere. And we're going to have to find it. I'll take off your coat. I'm going to have to leave you tied up here. I figured you would. What about him? Well, he's going with us. He ain't no fighter. No, he's a Judas. He was Andrew's adjutant at the prison camp. And his close friend. To save his neck, he agreed to lead us to Andrew's. Hey, you up in the rock. That's close enough. What do you want? A party with Colonel Hudson. All right, come on up. I'll tell him. Colonel Hudson, sir. That man Cartwright, he wants to parlay with you. Stay here. Keep a close watch. Yes, sir. Sawyer, right behind you. What kind of man do I seem to you? A decent man. One standing in my way. Between decent men, there must be room for discussion. I'll listen. There's something to be said for your side of the story. There's something to be said for Masters, Andrew's side. I don't know what that could be. I've got documented proof he's a murderer. Come to the house. Tell your story, then listen to Master's story. If we can't reach some kind of agreement, perhaps we can reach some kind of understanding. And if we reach neither? Then nothing has been lost but time. If we find one or the other, perhaps lives can be spared. All right. Here they come. Is he going to be shooting? Your uncle, Mr. Cartwright, and another man are walking together. And a man with a rifle is walking with them. But it looks more like talking than shooting. Oh, gosh almighty. Now what's the matter? Get my pants. You can't get up. It's Uncle Jim and Tom Andrews coming face to face after all these years. Well, I'm going to die if I'm not there to see it. Get my pants. Please get my pants. Major. Colonel. Oh, gentlemen, the, uh, the war's been over a couple of years now. It's ex-major and ex-colonel. Now I suggest we use our last names. Will Tyler, what are you doing here? I didn't want to, Tom. I... He told me you were here. He brought me here. 
My friend, you did that? You told him you brought... He threatened to kill me. There was nothing else I could do. <clears throat> oh, gentlemen, we came here for a purpose. I suggest we get started. Uncle Jim, I, I was wounded. Yes, so I understand. Well, not seriously. Branded is more the word on his backside. Who was the young lady? Mr. Andrew's daughter. No need to look, mister. No one else here. All right, gentlemen, let's begin. Now, you two have not seen each other since the prison camp broke up. Is that correct? I spent almost a year in a hospital getting over that camp. Meanwhile, Andrews had disappeared. My wife died just before the camp broke up. There were many memories I wanted to forget. This man is guilty of murder. I don't deny there were conditions oh, please. of... Please. Mr. Hudson, let's, uh, let's hear your story first. He kept us like rats in a cage. In a pestilential hellhole. Under conditions too terrible to describe. No food. Polluted water. No medicine to treat the diseased. I watched men who had served under me die one after another. And I promised each man before he died this man I would make this man this Thomas Andrews pay for his crimes with his life and I shall <clears throat> well I uh, I've heard of the conditions that often prevailed and I know that what you're saying is true but there are two sides to every story. And there were problems outside the camp. Mr. Andrews, would you tell us about them? I did my best. Failed. Couldn't provide medicine, clean water, food. But you did search the countryside for them i did i sent my foragers out 24 hours a day there was so little food anywhere mr andrews what was the cause of your wife's death the same thing she saved so much of her food for the children in the area. She had no strength. Disease came from the bad water. No medicine. Oh, Mr. Hudson. You see, some of your men died inside the camp. And his wife died outside the camp. He didn't go for a week at a time without food. Neither did you. All your men, you made that charge in camp, and I denied it. I deny it. We now. went for as much as a week at a time without a bite of food, not one morsel. I know for an absolute fact that your men were given a ration every single day. It wasn't much, but that much I could... Andrews, you lie. I do not, sir. Please, please, Mr. Hudson, please sit down. 
who's in the, who's in charge of the actual distribution of the food? Were you in charge of that? Well, Tyler was. He was my adjutant. My provision officer, he'll verify it. Tell him, Will. Will? Hello, Mr. Tyler. Well, I, uh, carried out orders. I did all I could. According to Mr. Andrews, food was provided for the men in the camp. According to Mr. Hudson, the food never reached them. Is that true? That's not true. Well, I have no reason to disbelieve either of these two gentlemen. But I tell you, it's not true. What happened to the food that was not delivered to the men in camp? Well, I gave it to them. All of it. You gave it to them? Mm -hmm. All of it? Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, isn't it true that in those days, a wagon load of food fetched a very fine price? Oh, I didn't. I didn't do anything like that. You never sold any food outside the camp? Mm -hmm. At any time? No. Maybe. Well, I don't know. I'm... You don't know? Oh, you, you don't remember? Or did you indeed sell food outside the camp? Mr. Tyler, did you sell any food outside that prison camp? Did you? Did you? Mr. Tyler! Answer, Tyler! Sire, stop it! Take good care of this young man. I surely will. Ted. I'm getting well fast. Good for you, Ted. Hudson, are you going to stay around these parts? No, Hoss. Uh, I'll leave my nephew here till he gets well, but I have urgent business in the East. Hudson, I hope life will be easier for you from now on. Well, thanks to you, I think it will. We'll be seeing more of you, I'm sure. Thanks, Hoss. It's been a strange few days here. I don't quite know. Hey, Sam. The color of that mine continues to improve. You're going to need more capital. You see me before you talk to anybody else, you hear? I'll do that, Ben. Take care. Take it easy, Sam. 